sweet. It's like 11 o'clock, uh, what the hell is today? Thursday. And I'm thinking of all the things that got to go in the dash. One of them is my heater control. That really cool heater under the dash. Um, my signal stat directional switch, which I got to put some diodes in. RP got a thing on diodes. We're going to have to, on the switch I gave him, we're going to have to do the same thing. What else is in here? I could use a piece of this to stop the dash from falling. Be a good idea. I think I said a flea market for like two bucks. Of course it's green. Everything I have is green. I still got this. Evelyn Teresa Collette. Alright, we're going to turn the power on in the garage and do a couple things. Nothing crazy. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, I've been running around grabbing a few things. This is my um, steering shaft. Now, you go on places, uh, hot rod websites and stuff, and they want $60 to $200 for one of these things, depending on how pretty you want it. This was a 90s Jeep Laredo, and um, it's got like a um, plastic clip in here that holds it from sliding. Normally, this thing's about a foot longer, and you can shorten them down to nothing. It's got what they call a 19 spline in one end. goes right on just about any GM steering box. And the other end is a double D, which goes on any GM column. Um, the nice thing about the Laredo is it's got two universal joints, not a big rubber block and, you know, a universal joint at one end. It's got two joints at both ends. Uh, my steering shaft is from an S10, and my steering box is from a 71 Nova, I believe it was, brand new. Got it from Don. Um, the signal stat, my directional switch out of a B model Mac and I liked it because it's got the parking light I mean the uh, what do you call it emergency flashes built in now it was really rusted and corroded they're also self-canceling it was really rusted and corroded and I had cleaned it up and painted it you know a military color of course it's not tight because the shaft is just sitting there but um I gave peak my other one I had a couple of these some some similar the other one is more like Art Deco, really fancy and stuff. This is my heater control. This thing, I don't remember what it came from. Nobody knows what it came from. But it's got a defroster lever. One of those old steel cables. Goes back to the heater and opens and closes this flap for defrosters, which I have to make. Um, when you wanted heat back then, you opened a door and turned the heater on. And there's a little fan in here, brand new heater coil. It says, um, super power on the front but um, I'm mounting things up just to get an idea how long wires have to be and stuff um, the signal stat has a little like a uh, beveled thing that comes out where the wires would come out and I want to seal all the wires up this is high temp um, like an insulating tube it's you know very flexible stuff it feels like um, like a there's like a fiber in here it's a cloth dipped in rubber anything that comes off the wires is going to go through those for us so it'll be like that uh, what else oh this is um this is your heater control now this didn't come with the heater i bought it on ebay for like i don't know it's 15 bucks it's a mechanical valve that opens and closes for your temperature and it was like a british car or something but the cable this is actually the cable from the heater this thing was bought separate that's how you turn your temperature up and down. 
that's going to go up near the engine somewhere and the cable will come out the firewall but um, putting things on and trying things out and running wires this was that vacuum switch now it's a horn or a start button or whatever I want it to be I found one of my stainless tracks this goes in the windshield frame right there I gotta find the other one or I gotta buy one I haven't seen it in years it keeps saying my battery's dead. My iPod, I gotta figure out how to shut it off. I'm gonna get some wire and mess with a few things. I just wanna get the wires up and near the dash so I can connect them after. Um, there's a muffler clamp down there. This steering, this tube is um, two inch stainless steel. My dad had it uh, in his cellar near his vise. This is actually the clip and the end bushing and the bearing for the steering shaft, which is over there under the bench. But uh, it all works. Works good. Bearings floating out. And that connects to my steering box, which has the 19 spline down there. You see it? But yeah, Jeep Laredo. And I don't have one, I have like three. Every time I seen a Jeep Laredo, I would take it out. It was like an 11 millimeter nut. You take this all the way out, and then it just slides off. You gotta heat the middle and get that clip to separate. And when you're done, when I get the length I need, you just gotta put a little weld there. But, uh, I'm looking for more goodies to put on. I'm going to put a newer stereo under here, but it's going to be set back. You're really not going to see it. But i got to charge my iPod. Wish the dash didn't turn. Signal stat 900 signal flare. Brooklyn, New York, USA. Patents pending. It's got pitting. Oh, sorry. They didn't have one in billet. I looked everywhere. I don't care if it's rusty or not, or painted, or as long as it looks old. All right, let's do what I can here. Well, the steering shaft is in. This little bushing is actually factory. Um, my dad machined it down so it fit tight inside the two-inch stainless tube. The Jeep Laredo steering shaft is in, and it's all tight. 19 spline is on the shaft with the 11 millimeter bolt in it. It's weird because this was like uh, 80s, 90s. It was like 80, late 80s. They um, had some weird stuff. I mean, this was this was a standard. I think it's uh, 3 16 bolt or 5 16 18 with an 11 millimeter head. What the hell? Um, this shaft actually extends out. It could extend up to here if I needed to. I don't know exactly where the depth of the steering shaft is going to be right now, or you know how far it's going to stick out of the dash. But that looks pretty damn good. You won't know until you have the seats in. And I had the seats in once before with uh, my son sitting in them, and that's a pretty small car. Uh, 20s was really, really small cars. I mean, the cowl was like six inches narrower than this. Hank has a, a cowl from I think it's an old Dodge. But um, you could put his cowl inside my cowl or bulkhead. Um, but it works. That little bit of slop is where I have to weld right there where the two shafts come together. But I don't want to do any of that stuff until everything's in place and I know where I want the steering wheel. I've got to make my firewall. That little valve, let's go with that. That little um, British valve thing. I was messing with where it could go. I don't want it to be out too long. I was thinking it could go somewhere here in line with the heater core. Turn the temperature up and down. But it's the same size. That's one thing I made sure everything was the same size. Um, the valve that shuts off the heat completely, if I can get out of the light. This actually came out of the original engine. It's a little key valve. Plugs into the intake and you can sh shut the hot water right off. That was fun. I had to struggle with that. I had to take the whole column out and put the tube in it, smack it together. And then it would go in. But the shaft slides apart. I mean, it's been 
probably half hour and we have steering already now this is like I said an S10 steering column it's got the spring load and it's got the bearing and the nylon race um, it's got all the splines I, I got the nut somewhere if I don't have one I can get one that's where the horn would have sat um, since my horn's going to be over here there's going to be no electrical inside the thing except for of course the directional switch but take the simple updated and make it look old make it work old um, I've got that little steering wheel here somewhere. Here you go. And these are just dirty GM steering wheels from the junkyard. That's one of my favorites. I think it was Cavalier. Really big pads. I wouldn't put this on the car, but I'll show you how things haven't changed in years. That's it. <laughs> we turn the wheels. Hey, look at that. Hey, you turn it to the right. It goes right. At least I got that right. It was actually a way where you could have made it so it's steered backwards do the crosslink wrong but yeah that's just a common GM spline if it's any steering wheel yeah, I forgot something it's all dusty I should wash it off I think this was 2006 or something 2000 Cavalier if I can get the damn thing in there it is that's updated cute and it would work and it might have to for a little bit but it kills me just not old enough yeah that that screams it's a hot rod <laughs> an updated like billet hot rod know what I mean I'm gonna wipe that down that would leave it on for now doesn't hurt anybody's feelings I don't know but see the wheel Turns left, turns right. Um, you see me putting things together. I didn't, I didn't make the stuff overnight. Some of the stuff I had been making as I went along. Some of the stuff I made when the car was all apart. Uh, me and my dad made a steering column. Hell, I didn't even have the frame was sitting out there on a stand. But I'm gonna clean it up anyway. I have to get a new one though. This one's dirty. And don't think I couldn't use that wheel because my dad laid up uh, three layers of three-quarter inch oak and he machined a round collar that would adapt it. Isn't that pretty neat? They're all screwed and glued together and there's a piece of stainless over the front so it doesn't bottom out. It's machined to fit the two-inch tube on the inside and uh, the face of the steering wheel on the back. It's just sitting there now. But that could be locked in place. Imagine that, two inches to like four and it's wood. Pretty neat. So I'm taking some pictures and uh, I gotta get my ass to work. Okay, guys, have a good day.